Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Watch News Weekly. Today is Sunday, August 20th, and we have a few really cool topics to discuss today. So let's hop right into it. Next to me is Marco. Everybody here knows Marco. It's good to have you back. It's been a while since we sat down and did a video together. Yeah, few, few planned. They're, they're going to be some bangs. Sounds good. So let's hop right into it. Emoji winners, Tom Brady and John Mayer are the first two people to receive the new Rolex Day Date Emoji Puzzle Dial. The Day Wheel shows 31 emojis, including a kissing face, a panda, and a smiling poop, it says. Yeah, there's even a poop emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, and a, day, and a, and a day wheel for one full of, uplift, of uplifting words such as love, faith, and hope. Thoughts on market price? Well, I will say right out the gate, there are so many requests for this watch, especially in Asia, yeah. right? And I have yet to see one on the market. But I would assume at a right around forty thousand dollar retail price, maybe a touch more, it's definitely going to go for three X out the gate. Yeah, I would have, I would have said the same thing, right? We saw the new Le Mans Daytona come out at like two hundred plus thousand, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is like three X, actually almost four X retail, actually five X. It's five X retail. <laughs> a lot. Excuse my a excuse my math. Yeah, it's five X retail. But yeah, no, this is actually a, a cool watch. So John Mayer got the white gold one. This is yep. the rose. Uh, but Tom, Tom Brady, Brady, dude, Brady's been wearing some. Dude, Brady's on a tear, man. Dude, he's 1103s, and I think maybe his contract expired. Yeah, with IWC, right? 1103, 3700 white at yeah. the Michael Rubin's party. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, he's, he's got, enjoy, enjoy, he's enjoying he got his to, retirement and the and the divorce. It seems like he did out okay, thankfully. Yeah, listen, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is this just a collectible or can it be a daily? I I think yes to both. I mean, I would say that again, we never know the allocation or how long something's going to be in production for, but I can tell you for a fact. If this is something that's going to be a maybe like a year run, like the Tiffany OP41 yeah. was, is going to be an absolute collectible. Yeah, so when this was first released, me and Roman reacted to it. I had no idea what it was for, like yeah. why they did that jigsaw, but come to find out, obviously, it was uh, for autism awareness. Yep. And I mean, it's such a great cause. For, many people don't know this, but Rolly's actually a not for profit, right? Yep. So they're actually a, char a charitable trust, technically, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of what they, they do in terms of the profits, obviously, they're run like a normal business, but they go towards, you know, initiatives in Geneva and all over the place to help the misfortunate, and this is such a great cause. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's get to the next topic, and the next topic would be Gen Z boosting the watch market. Younger buyers are splurging in pursuit of rare deals and special finds. Boston Consulting Group reports that 95% of watches are no longer in production, which increases the value and appreciation potential. Luxury watch sales are a $75 billion market with secondhand sales making up 30% of that, according to the Boston Consulting Group. It continues to grow as demand, particularly among young consumers, picks up. What are your younger clients buying? It's an interesting one, right? I've seen, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I have actually a lot of young clients. I've seen their tastes evolve so much over time. But you see this a lot in the market, even with older, you know, older as in like, you know, 30, 40, 50, going up in, in age. You start at the Rolex, then you go to an AP. Maybe you go to like a Patek Nautilus or like maybe you'll dabble into a Richard Mill. Then you go maybe to like a Longa or a Breguet. Then you kind of venture out, right? And you've seen that evolution, I'm sure, with your clients as well. And I think it's really interesting to see that. Now, one thing that I do like about this is uh, this says 95% of watches are no longer in production. First of all, I'd love to know where they get that statistic. Yeah. And then second of all is, is the 30% is pre-owned, right? So yep. the fact that 30% of the market now is pre-owned with the potential, I feel, to even go higher uh, just because retail prices are continuing to go up, the, the secondary market is catching up with retail prices in a lot of cases. It, it'll be an interesting next few years. I'd have to, listen, again, I don't know where they're getting these figures from. I don't know if it's an internet scrape or whatever it is, but if you think about it, how is it not on par with the brand new market? Yeah, it, it's, it's been, you know, if, if, if watches have been produced since the 18, what, 1700s, right, Breguet or yeah, whatnot, yeah. Where's all those watches over the past 250 years? No, it's, it's right? I, mean, I mean, listen, I mean, there was a huge gap in the 1700s yeah, until right, right. 19, the production, 1907. Obviously, yeah, right, obviously, yeah, right. Yeah. The production of watches weren't as ma mass produced as they sure. are today. But I would, you know, it's, it's really funny. Right now we're in an environment where people, especially younger buyers, are really on the fence as to what their next purchase is going to be, right? They, yeah. they're, they're starting to go smaller in terms of, of, of uh case sizes, they're starting to go for stuff that's more rare, boutique only stuff. I think like the, the hype has kind of been sucked out of the market and yeah. we're seeing a lot of people consolidate. Yeah, it's a consolidation and upgrade phase, right? And even not necessarily upgrade, but like you'll see people a lot of the time consolidate their collection. Okay, I'm only wearing you know these select pieces. Yeah. Maybe I want to add one really special one and, and kind of call it a day. 100% agree. Yeah. 
So the next topic we have here today, guys, is why are men wearing women's watches? In the past couple years, we have seen a number of prominent male celebrities opting for vintage women's timepieces. Rapper Bad Bunny was one of the earliest to flaunt his collection of vintage women's models and favors yellow gold vintage models for brands like Paddock and Audemars Piquet. The Weeknd was spotted wearing a women's Piaget light, Limelight Gala high jewelry watch. Tyler, the creator's model of choice, has been the Cartier Obus. Actor Austin Butler opted for Cartier's mini Pentair. Thoughts on the trend? Have you sold any women watches to men? Here's the first time that I will say I saw somebody wearing a lady's watch. And that was a couple years ago. It was actually none of these people that we mentioned. It was actually Drake. In a post, he was wearing a full diamond RM7, ladies, which is the smallest version of a Richard Mille, yeah. with an open link diamond bracelet. And we're like, all right, what the hell is going on here, right? Mm -hmm. um, thoughts on the trend? Again, we're always, we always stand behind the fact that buy what you like. I am not really seeing much of it being a trend for our consumers, and obviously celebrities and rappers are like a little bit more bold in their tastes and can get away with literally anything, right? Yeah. Especially a Piaget Limelight Gala, which yeah. is as feminine as a watch gets. Yeah, I, I mean, it's an interesting trend in the sense that we've seen this kind of play out, I would say, even over the last decade or so, with the rise of like the popularity of the cardiac crash. Because, I mean, listen, this is just my personal opinion. It's a very like, it's a feminine, like it feels to me like a I more agree. feminine watch, I agree right? With that. But it's become like the line has blurred so much to where a men and women's watch is no longer, you know what I mean? There's no real distinction other than what we feel is the case size. And I mean, you go back in history, Muhammad Ali wore like a tiny Cartier tank on his wrist, right? And it looked like small on, yeah, on his yeah. ginormous wrist. He was the heavyweight champion of the world. So it's only by modern standards that we, we evaluate a man's watch by the size of it, right? So it's kind of more of a modern trend, if anything. It's, I would say, it's, I would, yeah. It's I would, interesting. Would, it's really evolved over the last decade. I would, I would say, say for, I anything. would say for our customers, I have been seeing a trend, not necessarily in ladies' watches, but scaling downwards. 36s and so yeah. for, for day dates, uh, even even for APs, especially Patek's, as I'm wearing an offshore. Yeah. I think <laughs> the bigger trend has been the reverse. Uh, ladies wearing men's bigger? watches. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it's, that's been more the reverse. I mean, listen, the, you'll see the odd occasion a man wears a smaller watch, but I don't really consider Drake it. Drake was just wearing a turquoise, the new turquoise yeah, they don't have strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on the fence about it. it. And it goes back to the whole thing with Van Cleef, the Alhambra. We actually did an unboxing. We were talking about how men are wearing the Alhambra now, which yeah, was never a thing. Yeah, but those are pretty nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. If you like it, yeah. listen, no, nowhere does it say this is for a man, nowhere yeah. does it say it's for a lady. Buy, guys, buy what you like. 100%. On to the next topic, and that would be Omega revealing a 2024 Paris Olympics Seamaster. Wow, man, I can't believe the Olympics is coming up. I know. You know what's crazy? Every time the Olympics comes up, I feel like I'm just getting older. Like, you know what's like, crazy? I was just, just watching it, and it was for, whatever. I feel like the Olympics have died off completely. Like, I people just don't care anymore, you know? I would, I would have to agree with you I remember bit. watching the as, Olympics. You were, like, in awe of these I'm athletes. Not, I'm not, and, I'm like, not as excited. Now I'm just I like, oh, yeah, a lot of these guys are just... I do prefer Winter know. Olympics, though, for whatever reason. <laughs> okay. So as the antip anticipation for the upcoming Paris 2024 Olympic Games continues to build, not on our case, we're not... <laughs> really building up any anticip yeah. anticipation here. Omega, Omega pays tribute to his role as an official timekeeper with the exquisite Seamaster Diver 300M Paris 2024 Special Edition watch. The Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter Paris 2024 boasts a stainless steel 42 millimeter case providing both durability and elegance. But what really catches the eye is the 18 karat moonshine gold bezel ring that encircles the case. Flip it over and you have the commemorative case back there. That's the patented NAIAD lock and a stainless steel medallion that tells a story of Olympic rings in Paris 2024. Thoughts on the watch? I mean, it's just another Omega Seamaster yeah. with a different bezel and dial. It's you know what the thing is, right? Is I'm so used to seeing this that I'm so unbothered by it. It's like, oh, it's a new, you know, if Rolex releases a new Submariner, they just don't do it often enough. They've just killed the Seamaster, Speedmaster line and, and have done it in so many different variations. Like, I would love to see like a new bracelet, maybe a new dot, like something different, you know? I would say that I would say that the majority of buyers of the swatch in my opinion, are not going to care for the fact that it has anything to do with the Olympics, yeah. rather the aesthetics of the watch. If you like the gold bezel, you like the gold elements in the yeah. dial, I could see it being 
you know, it's rather large. So what do they say, 42 millimeters? It's 42 millimeters, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess the, t- the touch on the back is cool. You know, maybe if you actually go to the Olympics, it could be yeah. like a commemorative piece or something. My, but. my point is more of this. Like, okay, you have a, a, an opportunity to use kind of a, your blank canvas in the Omega Seamaster as a commemorative piece. Do something a little bit different. Do something experiment. on the dial. Yeah, experiment. Like, do something on yeah, the dial. Yeah, just experiment. Whether it's like Eiffel Towers on the hands or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like what Rolex cool. did with yeah. La, the Le Mans Daytona, okay? Was it cheesy? Yeah, a little touch. Yeah, was it nice. a little cheesy going back to the nice. Paul Newman's or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just nice. It, it was tastefully done. So Same we'll see. Thing. I'm sure they're going to hit the market in a uh, Crash and burn yeah. and die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next topic, Glassuth. Speaking of crashing yeah. and burning. <laughs> <laughs> Glassuth Original introduces 270s chronograph panoramas. Glassuth, and am I saying it right? Glassuth? Glassuth? Probably not, yeah. but yeah, okay. Original uh, announced the release of two all new 70s chronograph panoramas featuring a limited edition model. With a streamlined 40 millimeter square case, the 70s chronograph panorama showcases 70s inspired construction crafted from satin polished stainless steel. While one of the new releases comes equipped with a Golden Bay matte lacquer dial, the limited production version comes with a stunning ocean breeze finish. The chronograph dial adds a contrast using black and white markers, hand subdials, date, and a panorama date window. The 70s chronograph panorama generates its power from Glissute Originals in-house caliber 3702, an automatic chronograph movement equipped with a lengthy 70-hour power reserve. Is Glissute an up-and-comer or already arrived? <laughs> Dead um, in the water. How <laughs> diplomatic do we have to be here? I don't think we have to be. Yeah. Dip- how many have we sold this year? I will say, look. Yeah. I will say. I will say one thing. Where I, I have a little bit of respect. I have a respect yeah. for brands that have a different or unique K shape. Yeah. I don't actually find them that unattractive. I don't know. This is very. I prefer the, this. Is the, such a dated look. I find. What, what, again, this is going back to to the retro seventies look. Yeah. And what, what's what's our thoughts about you know. Remasters, as they say, re-editions. Yeah, I have never been a fan. It's one of those things for me. Like let you know, let legends be legends. let legends yeah. be legends. I don't like remasters. You know, it's it, to me, remasters are a cover band. Yeah, no, I get that. I, first of all, I love the marketing behind it, right? The ocean breeze dial. Yeah. It's, it's Gotta throw a Tiffany. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like a Tiffany. Just another Tiffany. Tiffany another another, Tiffany, another yeah. Tiffany bandwagon. You know, I, I always said this. Glashuta is phenomenal for their quality they're in a very weird space in the market in that they're kind of in what i call the no man's land so they're not they're a little above i would say even rolex and all those kind of mass manufacturers in terms of quality but they're like right there with jlc and iwc where they're not a patek ap vacheron yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so they're not regarded as that higher level or in their case against longa but they're still very good quality so they just get forgotten about right because they're in that middle no man's land price point between a rolex and a patek and it's just like oh. yeah i mean but listen brands like IWC and JLC, they've made some super watches oh, in terms of, of complications. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Sute hasn't really touched on that too much, so they kind of, to me, they kind of fall around the Panerai level. No, they're, they're, they're definitely above that. I mean, I mean, listen, it's it's up for debate in the sense that uh, the watch is great quality, but it's just no no one really tough, cares for it. Yeah. Tough, tough to sell. Unfortunately. Yeah. So guys, that concludes today's edition of Watch News Weekly. Let us know your thoughts on the emoji watches, men wearing women's watches, bringing things back from the past, and the Omega Seamaster Paris edition. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Watch News Weekly.